The following is an AZPM original production. Arizona Science is supported by Research Corporation for Science Advancement. For Arizona Public Media, I'm Tim Swindle, Professor Emeritus of Planetary Science at the University of Arizona, and this is Arizona Science. Joining me today is Ilaria Pascucci, a professor in the university's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. Welcome, Ilaria. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Ilaria, you've been using the James Webb Space Telescope to study protoplanetary disks around forming stars. First, can you explain what a protoplanetary disk is? So when young stars form, uh, they are surrounded by uh, dust, and you can think of them as a tiny grain uh, that range in size from smoke-like particles to pebble-sized grains that you can find in the beach, and then uh, also gas. And this uh, material circling around uh, is not in a kind of spherical cloud, but more in a pancake-like structure, which is what we call uh, a circumstellar disk. And that's important uh, to study because that's the material from which uh, planets are forming. And what have you been trying to study about these in particular? I study different aspects. My main focus is really to understand how planets form. And so I do observations, both of these young disks, but also on the uh, demographics uh, of already formed planet. And then I connect the two fields to understand the key physical processes that lead to planet formation. Uh, regarding protoplanetary disk, uh, in this new study that we published in Nature Astronomy, uh, we try to understand how the material of these disks uh, evolve and disperse, which is important for planet formation. And how do you study how the material is evolving? In this study, we took the most detailed images of uh, outflowing gas from uh, this disk uh, with the James Webb Space Telescope. The amazing uh, detail of these images led us to understand what is the nature of this uh, uh, flowing gas. We found out that the gas is flowing away from the disk and so is not available to form of planets because of uh, magnetic field uh, that entrain the disk. And so the um, ionized gas uh, is uh, pulled towards this magnetic field uh, and then uh, together also uh, leads the other non-ionized gas uh, to move away from the disk. At what stage is this compared to when planets form? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, we don't know exactly when planets are forming, but we and others have done other observations, for instance, with the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, which is the largest interferometer uh, that we have on Earth, um, that shows uh, structures in these disks uh, that suggest that planets are already forming early on when they are disks are one, two million years old, which is, I know it sounds like a big number, but actually it's a small number in comparison to how long uh, stars like our sun live, which is billions of years. And why did you use the James Webb for this particular study? We use the James Webb because uh, of the spatial resolution that it has, uh, which is six times uh, better than its predecessor, uh, was the Spitzer Space Telescope at the same wavelengths, and because we know that there are uh, tracers of this gas uh, moving away uh, that we are sensitive to at infrared wavelengths. So we knew that James Webb Space Telescope was the best choice. This particular study, you only studied a few disks, correct? Yeah, that is right, only four. This was a pilot study. Yeah. So does that mean that the next step is to look at more of these and see whether these were typical? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, about a month ago, there was proposal deadline for uh, the James Webb Space Telescope. And so we proposed a larger sample, but also uh, we proposed to study the most uh, typical stars. So in this pilot study, we looked at stars that are more similar to our sun, but our sun is not the most typical uh, star in our galaxy. In fact, uh, much smaller stars that are uh, half or even a tenth of the mass of the sun are the most typical ones. So we focus on a larger sample to study them to see if this phenomena is typical. Our guest today has been Ilaria Pascucci, an expert on the disks that stars and planets form from, who has recently been using the James Webb Space Telescope to study the process. This is Tim Swindle, and you've been listening to Arizona Science. You can also listen to this and other Arizona Science segments by going to the AZPM website at azpm.org.
Thank you to Research Corporation for Science Advancement for their support of Arizona Science. AZPM podcasts are made possible in part by donations from listeners like you. Learn more at support.azpm.org. Thank you.